on Thursday, May the 5th, 1977, 19-year-old student Christine Kozik mysteriously vanished. Just after midnight that evening, the Purdue University freshman asked one of her sorority sisters in the Alpha Delta Pi sorority to borrow her car. Christine told her that she was planning to visit a friend, possibly a boyfriend. Different sources say different things about the relationship. At his fraternity, about four blocks away, then head back to a local tavern called The Pub, where Christine had been earlier that evening. Her sister agreed, giving Christine the keys to a white 1976 Ford Mustang. When Christine didn't immediately show back up, it didn't raise cause for alarm. The school year was nearly at a close, and students were finishing up their final exams. Some, who had already completed their finals, had returned home or were in the process of packing up. Lots of end-of-the-year parties were happening, and people were saying their goodbye to friends. Christine's sorority sisters assumed she had simply stayed elsewhere that evening. Christine was known as a straight-A student. She had already taken four of her five finals and was scheduled to take her final exam, her chemistry final, on Friday, May the 6th. When she didn't show up for the exam, her professor assumed that Christine, a very dedicated and intelligent student, must have had an emergency. He gave her an A anyways, solely based on how well she had done in his class. Classes ended for the year that Friday, and Christine still hadn't made an appearance. Most of the sisters in a sorority packed up and left to return home. According to them, they thought that perhaps Christine had returned home to Downers Grove, Illinois, for an unknown emergency. It wasn't until May the 19th, two weeks after Christine had last been seen, that her sorority sister, whose car she had borrowed, called the police. The police quickly located the missing white Ford Mustang in a nearby parking lot close to Wells Memorial Library in Lafayette, Indiana. The Mustang yielded little evidence other than the keys were found in the glove box, and according to the car's owner, very little gas had been used. Police travelled to Illinois to question Christine's family and friends about her whereabouts. However, they discovered that neither her parents or friends knew where she was. An immense search was launched in an attempt to locate the missing Purdue co-ed, including an extensive air search of nearby fields, woods and lakes. The end of the school year made the attempts by police to locate witnesses and friends of Christine's extremely difficult. Employees of the bar Christine was said to have been at were questioned, but proved to be unhelpful. The young man was tracked down that she was supposed to visit that evening, however he claimed that Christine had never showed up that evening. Six weeks and five days later, six miles south of Lafayette in Weir Township, a farmer discovered a set of badly decomposed tumor remains in one of the fields. The body was identified as that of Christine through her dental records. Due to the advanced state of decomposition, a cause of death could not be determined. No clothing or personal items were discovered on the body, and it could not be determined if Christine had been sexually assaulted. A debate amongst law enforcement was never settled as to when her body was left in the field. However, most reports say that she was there since the evening of her disappearance. Others believe she was placed in the location more recently. However, they did not elaborate on that theory. On August the 19th, 1977, just over three months since Christine had been last seen alive, another woman in the area would mysteriously go missing. 30-year-old Linda Sue Ferry left her home in Mulberry, Indiana, a small town just under 30 minutes from where Christine was found, to go grocery shopping. Linda and her husband Billy were planning a boat trip on Saturday with friends, and she wanted to make sure they had enough picnic supplies for the trip. Linda left around 9.30pm to head to a 24-hour, payless grocery store located in the mall. Billy stayed at home. When morning came, and Linda still hadn't returned home, Billy called police around 11am to report her missing. A description of Linda and her 1965 Oldsmobile F85 were given to police by Billy. Linda and Billy had been married once before, had three children, divorced, then remarried. Billy had been raised in Mulberry, however, the couple had only recently rented the house in Mulberry four weeks prior to Linda's disappearance. Billy was questioned by police, but they found no reason to believe that he had anything to do with her disappearance. On August the 24th, police received a call from employees of the National Homes Acceptance Company claiming that an Oldsmobile was parked in their employee lot and a very bad odour was coming from the trunk. Police arrived to find the vehicle, belonging to Linda, covered in flies 
and a foul stench was indeed seeping out of the trunk. Using a crowbar, police pried open the trunk to find the badly decomposed remains of Linda Ferry inside. Linda's exact cause of death could not be determined due to the remains advanced state of decomposition. However, a coroner believed she was most likely strangled. Linda was found partially nude, however, it could not be determined if she had been sexually assaulted. No groceries were found in the vehicle, leading police to believe Linda had never made it to the grocery store that evening. This case is a better known one, so I'll only summarise it briefly. On September the 12th, 1977, 20 year old Indiana University student Anne Louise Heimeyer was reported missing after failing to return to the Bloomington, Indiana campus. Her rust coloured Pontiac Lehmans was found locked and empty on the shoulder of State Road 37, about two miles north of Martinsville, Indiana. The car was later found to have a faulty thermostat. 36 days later, her body was found in a cornfield approximately seven miles northeast of Martinsville, Indiana. It was determined that she had died from strangulation by a shoelace. In February of 1978, five months after Anne had been murdered, 26-year-old Mary Beth Pixie Grismore went missing from a house in rural Marshall, Indiana. Mary was born and raised in Corridon, Iowa, where she became a runner-up in Miss Iowa beauty pageant. At an early age, Mary married her first husband, Robert, who was originally from Marshall, and the pair ended up moving there together. They had two sons, but divorced in 1977, when Mary was 25 years old. She returned to Iowa where she met her second husband, Donald Gilmore. After the pair married on February the 12th, 1978, Mary decided to drive back to Marshall to retrieve the remainder of her belongings from her rural home there. After she finished packing her personal belongings into her new husband's 1973 Ford Thunderbird for the trip back to Iowa, on the evening of February 21st, 1978, two of Mary's friends and her sisters came to pick her up from a house in Marshall together. They travelled together to nearby Terre Haute, Indiana, home of India State University, for a last night out with each other before Mary left. The four women went to the movies, then ate at Red Lobster, before ending their night dancing at the Bow Disco. Around 1.30am, the group dropped Mary back off her house and left. The following morning, Mary's friends and sister returned to help her finish packing, only to find Mary was gone, as were her husband's Thunderbird. Inside, however, they found Mary's clothes from the night before, as well as her purse. Nothing was missing from the house, and it didn't appear as though any struggle inside. On May the 3rd, 1978, police in Whitehall, Ohio, opened the trunk of a Ford Thunderbird with no license plates that had been left in the parking lot of a local Holiday Inn for nearly two months. Inside, they discovered the remains of a badly decomposed body that, through dental records, were later be confirmed to belong to Mary. A rope was found around Mary's neck, and her death was ruled as strangulation. Unlike the other cases, there were potential suspects in Mary's murder, one being a post employer, the other a senator. The final case on this list happened seven years later, and the victim has never been found. However, because she vanished from Pewter University under a similar circumstances, I wanted to include a brief summary of her case as well. 19-year-old Schmidt was a freshman at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana in 1985. She majored in electrical engineering. She lived in Dayton, Ohio. She was last seen at Purdue on August 6, 1985. She left her apartment near the university campus to go to talk to a professor. She was last seen to talking to an acquaintance at Grant and Northwestern Streets. Schmidt had never heard from again. Foul play suspected in the case. She was declared legally dead in 1993. Although there's no way to confirm these cases are related, I wanted to note that in multiple articles, police mentioned they believe Christine and Linda's murder were committed by the same person and labelled that person as a serial killer. In later articles, the similarities between Linda's murder and Mary's are also noted. <laughs> 